The United States Army of the Potomac fought in the American Civil War between 1862 and 1865. This army, often visited and closest to their president, deserved to be known, both then as well as now, as Mr. Lincoln's Army. The Army of the Potomac had survived several inept commanders early in its history. There was a striking transition from early war city regiments and state militias, troops recruited for only one to two years, to Billy Yank of the Middle War period, who hailed from the rural counties and states, who were now asked to serve Mr. Lincoln for three-year enlistments. This Army of the Potomac was a body of men that had survived the worst poundings and worst punishments that Confederate General Robert E. Lee and his vaunted Army of Northern Virginia could inflict. But Mr. Lincoln's army sustained itself long enough for the arrival of two commanders who could harness their fullest potential. Those commanders being Major General George Gordon Meade and Ulysses Simpson Grant under Grant's personal direction in 1864 and 1865, the Army of the Potomac became a federal agency of death, its sole purpose being the engagement and extinction of the Army of Northern Virginia. The Army of the Potomac finally proved its thirst for victory between April 2nd and April 9th, 1865. By the spring of 1865, the Army of the Potomac had become the ultimate predator, and the Army of Northern Virginia was their prey. The Army who beat Lee in 1865 took three years to assemble and train to perfection. Who were these men that melded into a perfect fighting machine? Mr. Lincoln's Army, the Army of the Potomac, was not wholly the fighting force that had lost at first Bull Run on July 21st, 1861. In the spring of 1862, General George B. McClellan was ordered to take several of those old regiments and brigades that had fought outside of Washington and join them with newly recruited regiments. He then drilled them endlessly and formulated this force into an Army of the Potomac who would actually sail to Virginia and fight mostly along the James River to make an end-run attack from the south and east. The Army of the Potomac would fight from Williamsburg to Richmond in the Peninsula and Seven Days battles, sometimes on the attack and sometimes on the defense. These bloody and ultimately fruitless losses tempered the army, and in the resulting 1862 campaigns of Second Manassas, Antietam, and Fredericksburg proved that the Army of the Potomac would fight toe to toe with its nemesis, the Army of Northern Virginia. The problem with the army was not the medal of the men, but rather with the leadership. Generals McClellan, McDowell, Pope and Burnside were simply not up to the job. In May 1863, the Army of the Potomac under Hooker had smashed into the divided Army of Northern Virginia at Chancellorsville. The boys in blue had struck Lee hard and the Army of Northern Virginia bent but did not break. Lee regrouped, and his trusted commander, Stonewall Jackson, turned the tide. The rebels ultimately forced Hooker's army to retreat. The men were furious. In July 1863, the Army of the Potomac, now mostly comprised of arguably more hardy three-year regiments, fought their best fight of the war for three endless days. They sent the Army of Northern Virginia packing at Gettysburg in July 1863. There, 
Under another new commander, General George Gordon Meade, the army found that if allowed to stay locked with Lee, they could beat him. By the spring, 1864, President Abraham Lincoln appointed Ulysses S. Grant, the commander of all federal armies, and Grant decided to make his headquarters in the field, in the east, with the Army of the Potomac. The resulting overland campaign, consisting of the battles of Wilderness, Spotsylvania, North Anna, and Cold Harbor, would speak with action Grant's command to the Army of the Potomac to chase, bloody, and disintegrate the Army of Northern Virginia. The death of Lee's army, and not the Confederate capital, would be the mission of Mr. Lincoln's army. The South could not survive. Perhaps the unit who defined what the best of the Army of the Potomac was to be measured upon was the 1st Vermont Brigade consisting of the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th Infantry Regiments. This unit had no special uniform distinctions, save perhaps an occasional red blanket common to many New England regiments. Also, the Vermonters were keen on wearing the more formal frock coat as well as the soft black civilian slouch hat. Vermonters fought in the war early, through the Peninsula and Seven Day Battles, South Mountain, Antietam, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, and they entered the 1864 campaign with an already established reputation as the cream of the crop of the hard-fighting Sixth Corps. Vermonters were either the first in the fight or last to leave one. In the Battle of the Wilderness, on May 5th and 6th, 1864, the old Vermont Brigade, then commanded by Colonel Lewis Addison Grant, determined to not let the Army of Northern Virginia take their ground. In the two-day fight, the brigade lost almost 1,300 men killed and wounded. A week later, at Spotsylvania Courthouse, the brigade lost an additional 250 men. It was a bloody two weeks, with even more destruction at Cold Harbor to follow. In the last week of the war in Virginia, the brigade was the spearhead force to smash through the Confederate defenses on the south side of Petersburg at 5 a.m. on April 2nd, 1865, allowing for the collapse of the Confederates' western front. The Vermont Brigade sustained the most killed in action of any one Union Brigade in the entire war. This brigade was one of the best of Mr. Lincoln's army, as they had no flashy clothing, no ornaments, no specific ethnic definition, just tough Yankees who fought with the pure motivation of love for country and the old flag. Mr. Lincoln's army was trained by a system that was derived from the elite light infantry French chasseurs of the 1840s and 50s. Layers of training started with the laborers, farmers, and shopkeepers from across the Union becoming one. Not just by wearing blue uniforms, but by moving, standing, and firing as a single body of soldiers. 